Yeah, g'day. How you going? You thinking of moving to the country? Good. It'll do you good. You'll be a healthier person. So let's just go through one another issue that you might come into if you move to the country, the issue of life and death. Yeah, we handle all the big topics here. <laughs> okay. Now what I'm talking about is the life of animals. I mean, obviously farm animals, if you're talking about farmers who raise livestock, sheep, cattle, you know, chickens, um, pigs, you know, whatever. I've actually had a lot to do with all of this kind of animal husbandry um, in my design business. I actually have branched into designing intensive uh, agriculture, um, like uh, aquaculture, intensive piggeries, intensive poultry farms and so on. And, you know, there's a lot of bad press with this. You know, people get the impression that it's all about animal cruelty. These systems are designed purely to get numbers and blah, blah, blah. That's actually complete rubbish. It's, it's completely untrue for a simple reason. Farmers from a very early age, they're taught and they learn very quickly that an animal that is unhappy, that is stressed, that is malnourished and poorly um, housed or sheltered if it needs that, will not breed properly. You'll not get a good return on the breeding. It won't uh, give you a growth in the flock. You know, you get fewer offspring, quite obviously. I mean, you think about it. Um, isn't it natural? A happy, healthy animal produces more offspring than a highly stressed out animal um, that's malnourished and all that sort of stuff. Um, secondly, um, now whether you want to think about this or not, the fact is that if you're going past a paddock and you see some cattle there that are going to be one day going to end up in the slaughter yard and be on your supermarket shelf, if you see a cattle in a, a paddock and they look contented and there's nice uh, bit of feed there, you know, it's long grass for them to eat, you know, and so on. There's a bit of shelter around the paddock. And then you go past the paddock where there's like, it's overstocked, you know, so the the the, the uh, paddock is a bit bare and there's a bit of dust there and there's no shelter and no water and that kind of stuff. Which one of those two beasts is going to taste the best? Now think about this. Obviously the one that's contented, living in the better surroundings, is going to taste better than the one that lives in the mean, harsh surroundings. And if you are an animal manager and you raise your, your animals so that they are content and happy, you actually end up getting a lot more money for your meat at market and you actually get a reputation for producing better tasting meats. And it's for that practical reason at the baseline <clears throat> the farmers go out of their way to ensure that their animals are happy, healthy, well-fed and all those sorts of things, even in intensive agriculture. Um, and I can assure you, because I actually design these places, that millions and millions of dollars goes into ensuring that animals are happy and healthy because it's, it makes more money for the farmer. Simple as that. But there is another thing, you know, like you're dealing with animals who've got their own little quirks and personalities and they have their own little family structures you know the life of a herd the life of a flock you know and you cannot help if you're dealing with other living creatures to develop an affection for them and that's very noticeable like when you see a farmer um, managing calves you know you get the calving season and I know it's when they start getting a load of free money because there you've got uh, a cow and she starts dropping calves and that's another animal to sell at market when it grows up yeah that's true that's true but there's no doubt when you hear and you see the farmers and you know them and you know their families and their wives and their kids that they are genuinely happy at the experience of a new of the birth of a new creature and they get great pleasure out of uh, seeing that it's more than just a money thing and um, you have to be in the farming community to see that and you begin to realise that is the way human beings are meant to be. And it, you realise very quickly that people who live in the city and the only thing they know about animal life and animal death is a piece of meat wrapped in cellophane on a supermarket shelf. They're missing out on that whole part of the human endeavour. That's a very, very large part of what we are. Um, but you get to see it in the country. So that's a little something you'll observe and something you'll, you'll get used to, you know, the, the way 
the cycle of life and death works, you know. Um, we won't go waffling on about that anymore because we get into the deep issues of philosophy. But there's just a little thing that I've observed out here in the country that makes life very different here. Okay? Have a good day. See ya.